John was trespassing some razor wires when he scrapped his hand with multiple lesions. He got scared, and he did not want to tell anyone he was trespassing. He went home, washed his hands, and continued his everyday life. But, not for so long. John's eyes could not see the lethal tetanus bacteria living in that zone of the incident, took advantage of the wound, and crawled inside John's blood. One week later, John had no previous medical history, but he started having jaw spasms, difficulty breathing, and convulsions. His mom called 911. He was picked up and transported to the nearest ER as a medical emergency. What happened to John? His immune had a breach where an infection could easily access his blood. At the same time, his immune system was not updated to protect against tetanus infection. Pathogens, which are germs that cause us diseases. Such bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites, are all trying relentlessly to assault our bodies. Be careful, my friend. These hostile microbes are all after you. On the other side, the immune system, is our defense mechanism. If you hear the word immunology, it means the science of the immune system. We recognize three distinct functions of the immune system. They are as follows. Detection of abnormal activities. The second function is maintaining homeostasis. By eliminating non-functional tissues using the phenomena of apoptosis, which is defined as programmed cell death. The last function we will discuss is protection. It happens by the activation of the specific and nonspecific immunity systems to get rid of the invaders. This extensive network of billions of cells working together comes down to three major parts. The first obstacle a germ will face is the surface barrier. The second layer of defense is the innate immunity. We are born with this immunity, and it acts internally inside the body. All that we have mentioned so far is considered the first line of defense in our immune system. The second line of defense and that is is called the adaptive or the acquired immunity, this one generally develops by exposure to a pathogen or by vaccination. The surface barrier, or external defense, is the first obstacle a microbe will face. This part is composed of intact skin, mucous membranes, body systems open to outside environments, such as the respiratory and digestive systems, count on their mucous membrane to flash invaders out in addition to the chemical secretions that kill and neutralize the majority of attackers. Examples are an acidic environment like the gastric juice at a pH of only 2. Or with the antimicrobial effect of lysozymes found on our skins. The internal defense is the following phase of the innate immunity after the physical barriers are breached. Some characteristics of the innate system are nonspecific immunity, which means it targets any foreign target and fasts to act within minutes after the germ penetration. The innate response is inherited, and it is challenging for an infant to survive without a functional system after birth. This system fights a variety of microbes, toxins, and cancerous cells via the following weapons. The phagocytosis by some leukocytes. The secretion of antimicrobial proteins. The activity of natural killer cells takes the responsibility of eliminating infected and developing cancerous cells within our bodies. One important mechanism of this system is the inflammatory response, caused by the release of enzymes and proteins at the battle site. It enhances the function of the immune system, but it causes us discomfort due to its side effects such as fever, pain, and swelling. Let us now understand better each weapon of the innate system. The leukocytes, a fancy Greek name for our white blood cells. They are part of the two critical immune responses in our body. In the innate system, we find the neutrophils, the most abundant among the white blood cells. Eosinophile, their specialty is parasites, such infection will raise their value in a blood test. Furthermore, you will find the basophils. They respond to allergic reactions and parasite infections. Granulocytes, means cells that contain multiple granules within their body. The following leukocytes, have a role in both the innate and the adaptive systems. Macrophages, dendritic cells, natural killer cells, and the lymphocytes. We will understand better the role they play in a moment. What are phagocytes? It refers to the cells that perform phagocytosis. This means the process to kill and eat pathogens. They are highly mobile, the first cells to respond to any infection or inflammation. Macrophages, neutrophils, or dendritic cells are the most common phagocytes. 
Once they swallow the germ, they will represent the identification of those microbes that is what we call MHC2. Major histocompatibility complex, also known as human leukocyte antigen and abbreviated as HLA. A cell invaded by a pathogen, or having some cancerous activity in it, will represent its problem on a protein called MHC1, which will attract specific lymphocytes to induce the process of apoptosis, also called programmed cell death. Now, what is MHC2? When a phagocyte eats a pathogen, it will disintegrate the proteins of that germ, and it will present it on its surface in the form of a protein called MHC2. This representation will alert the adaptive system for the next steps in the immune response. A cell that is carrying MHC2 is called a professional antigen-presenting cell. The adaptive system acts when the innate system fails to eliminate the problem. Some characteristics of this system are slow response, specific targeting, and it stores the information for a faster reaction next exposure. The acquired immune system is made of two parts. The cell-mediated response, contains T-cells that mature in the thymus. And the humoral response is controlled by activated B-cells and antibodies. These cells develop in the bone marrow. The cell-mediated system count on two significant cells. The cytotoxic T-killer, and the helper T-cells. A naive T-cell is inactivated, which means a cell that has not been introduced to a pathogen yet. Once the dendritic cell introduces a MHC2 to the T cell, the helper T becomes activated. It is also called a Fector T helper. This cell does not kill, but it can now produce cytokines. This chemical will trigger an alarm in the entire immune system to promote other cells to work harder to fight the current pathogen. Part of the activated T cells will turn into memory T helper cells. These cells will store the information about the pathogen for future exposure to build a faster reaction next time. The same applies to the cytotoxic cells. Dendritic cells carrying the proper MHC2, will activate the T-killers. In turn, they will give birth to the effector T-cell. Part of them will turn into memory cells. Effector T-cells have a straightforward job. They will look for cells with MHC1 that shows altered activity, and they will induce apoptosis to get rid of the cell and all the pathogens within it. The B cells are the main component of the humoral response. To activate a naive B cell, it needs to bind to an antigen, which is the protein found on the microbe's surface, and it requires an activated T helper cell to bind to this same B cell before it gets activated and produces effector B cells. These cells are also called plasma cells. They are known as antibodies factories. They produce antibodies to kill pathogens. This explains why this system is also called antibody-mediated. Activated B cells give rise to memory cells that store the information about the pathogens for the following exposure. Antibodies are soluble proteins. We recognize several classes of antibodies. Each of them has a different specialty, they float around, and they bind to specific pathogens. They tag it as a GPS pending for a phagocyte to come and destroy it. This marking process is called opsonization. In some cases, antibodies can destroy the germ on their own. First, John, scratched his arm against a metal. This eliminated the physical barriers, which are the skin and the membranes of the vessels. The bacteria found its easy access to the bloodstream. Now the phagocytes could not destroy a specific pathogen such the Clostridium tetani. The adaptive immunity received an alert to act, but you know, the response is slow when it is the first time to meet a specific pathogen. By then, the pathogen invaded the nervous tissues with little resistance, and that is where it secreted its toxins. The result was the typical signs of a severe tetanus manifestation. We will discuss the inflammatory process in the following related lessons, and we will provide more in-depth descriptions for the leukocytes and the antibodies, and more. We now have come to an end. If you enjoyed our content, please like, and subscribe. To support our channel, share the content with your family and friends and let us know in the comments below what impresses you the most about our human body.